On slide 21, we're going to take a look at another kind of logistic regression. We will consider the regression of C2 on C1, that is, the latent class variable at time 2, related to the latent class variable at time 1. Now, this is going to be a, a nominal dependent variable. C2 is nominal. And the predictor, the independent variable, is also nominal, C1 but we're going to still be able to work within the uh, logit regression framework and the logit parameterization. So here you have a table that's familiar to you from uh, the end of chapter 14 in our user's guide. You have the uh, three classes as rows for latent class variable C1 and the three classes, the columns corresponding to the classes of C2. And you have A and B logit parameters in the table. We uh, recognize the M plus notation here as uh, bracket C2 number 1 for the intercept A1. That's the first intercept of the dependent variable C2. And then we have a second intercept A2, which is referred to this way. And then we have the four slopes, B11 to 22 which are the on statements. So C2 number 1 on C1 number 1 is B11, etc. down. And this is the M plus parameterization using the A and B loaded parameters where the last class is the reference class in all situations here. The shorthand specification of this is saying C2 on C1 that gives you all of these six parameters in one statement. Uh, the intercepts and the slopes, just like we do in regular regression of y on x for continuous y. But sometimes it's important to be able to refer to each of the individual components like we do here. On slide 22 then, we take a little closer look at what C2 rest on C1 actually means in its details. And drawing from uh, regression analysis with the continuous y, we're looking at the distribution of y given x, that is, this conditioning notation. And now, since we have a categorical dependent variable, C2, we're going to talk about the probability of C2 conditioned on C1. So what is that going to mean? Well, we're still in the logic parameterization. We're still in the last class as the reference class, so this is the transition table once again for the logits. Now, the way to look at this, given the fact that we condition on C1, we can take a look at each value of C1 separately, that is, each row of C1. And each row is a multinomial model. That is, we have three different outcomes of a categorical variable. So, in principle, there are three probabilities, actually two probabilities, since the probabilities have to add to 1, so two independent parameters. So that's the way to look at C2 given C1, one for each row of C1. For example, consider the A2 plus B21 in the first row and the second column. What does that mean? Well, that, that loaded expression can be translated into a probability for C2 equals 2, given that C1 equals 1, by the multinomial expression where we put in the exponent the loaded A2 plus B21 in the numerator, and in the denominator, <laughs> denominator rather, we have these different exponential expressions for all of the three categories, where the last one is 1 because the uh, because of the loaded zeros and e to the power of zero is one. Now we're going to talk about odds in connection with these tables. And the odds then is a ratio of probabilities as before. So we have the ratio of the probability of being in this cell, two and one, that is up here, relative to the probability of being in the last class while still in the first class, that is the first row of C1. And I claim that that's e to the power of a2 plus b21. That is, we have 
the ratio of this expression divided by, that's the probability here, divided by the probability in the denominator, c2 equals 3 given c1 equals 1, which is e to the power of 0, which is 1. So, but with the same denominator down here. So if you take the ratio of those two probabilities, the denominator cancels out, and all you get left is e to the power of a2 plus b21 with divided by 1. So it's just that expression. So that's the odds of transitioning from class 1 to class 2, that is this probability, divided by transitioning from class 1 to class 3 from class 1 to class 3. So that's how you think about these probabilities. They're talking about a transition, tra transitioning, and now we have them for two different uh, C2 classes. That odds of transitioning from class 1 to class 2 versus transition, transitioning to cla from class 1 to class 3, it's going to be very high for the reading example. That is, it's very unlikely to transition to class 3, going from class 2, much more likely to transition to class 2. This is, after all, in kindergarten, going from fall of kindergarten to spring of kindergarten. In other cases, it may be more of interest to compare, not to the last class, but to the class that corresponds to staying in the same class, that is 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 3, the diagonal. Now, you can do this by a change of reference class from the last class to the stayer class, the diagonal. So you have zero lotus on the diagonal of the transition table. So what you do then to get that to be zero, you subtract the term we had on the previous page, namely a1 plus b11. So that becomes zero, and then you subtract that a1 plus b11 from both of these two columns. Same thing for row two subtract a2 plus b22, etc. Just showing this in, in de detail. So this is suitable for considering the odds of transitioning from class 1 to class 2 versus staying in class 1. This is the stayer. So that may be of more interest in the reading data example. That is, you want to know what the odds is to actually move forward in your reading knowledge from class 1 to class 2 versus staying in class 1. Now this kind of display, these kinds of odds are produced automatically in the output. So you don't have to worry about it. But this is how it's done internally. And sometimes maybe you want to do it yourself for some reason. So here's an example then from the reading data transitioning from class 1 to class 2, that is fall to spring kindergarten. So we have this transition matrix for the first two time points that we looked at before. So we have the probability of staying in the same class is 0.338. Moving from class 1 to class 2 is 0 0.649. So a healthy probability of moving on to, uh, to higher knowledge of reading. If you translate this these probabilities then to um, odds for each row. You have the odds 1 for the diagonal class here everywhere so that thereby you can see that that's a reference class. And here you get the odds of 1.920 for moving from class 1 to class 2. And that's computed as below here, shown here. The odds of transitioning from class 1 to class 2 is the ratio of 0 0.649 up here to 0 0.338. That's the odds of transitioning, 1.920. So you have a healthy odds, almost odds of 2, two times higher probability of, of transitioning to the second class versus staying still at the first class. And then behind the scenes, M plus computes the 95% confidence interval, a non-symmetric confidence interval as is suitable for for odds, as we've talked about before. Now, sometimes you want to 
calculate these transition probabilities for different covariate values. When you bring in covariates into the model, like the poverty covariate in the reading data, you might want to have these transition probabilities computed for specific values for the, for in case in many cases several covariates, maybe at the means or at specific values. Earlier versions of M plus this was called the LTA calculator, but now we call it more generally just a calculator. So that's available from the M plus menu. That is, if you're in the output in the M plus editor's output, you have a menu pull down menu where you can then see the word calculator showing up. And if you click on that, in this case, you get a window which says covariate values for conditional probabilities and odds of the latent class variables. So then you have a list of uh, covariates, in this case only one, poverty. And you click on assign value and you enter, say, one and apply that. And then you get poverty is evaluated at the value one and then we click on OK and we get our transition probabilities and the odds for that particular poverty value. So here on slide 26 we see then the calculator in action. So this is regular LTA, the four time points, and you have C regressed on X uh, for poverty equals 1 and 0 and transitioning from C3 to C4. So these are the last two classes and class variables, the last two time points I should say. So you have poverty equals 1, poverty equals 0 and you're interested in the transition from C3 which is fall of first grade to C4, spring of first grade. So you have the, in, the rows being the starting classes and the columns being the ending classes for the two different values of poverty. So here are the values. And for instance, we can take, since we're at the end of uh, the four time points, we might be interested in the movement from the second class to the, to the third class, the desirable class at the end of uh, spring first grade. For those uh, classified as the family being in poverty, you have the probability of staying in class 2 is 0.226, moving from class 2 to class 3, 0.76. Whereas if, you don't, don't, if you're not in poverty, uh, then you have a lower probability of staying in class 2 and a higher probability of moving on to class 3. That is a more desirable outcome. So you have then the odds ratio here. Why is it an odds ratio and not an odds? Well, that's because now we're looking at the relationship between two variables, how the uh, poverty covariate influences a uh, transition. So now you have the ratio 0.764 divided by 0.226. That's the odds of moving for those in poverty and divided by the odds for moving 881 divided by 115 for those not in poverty. So the odds of moving on for poverty is 3.381, so it's lower than 7.66, which is the odds for poverty equals zero. So the odds, odds ratio is 0 0.44. So you have a low odds ratio. So you say that the odds is 0.44, less for uh, poverty equals 1 than for poverty equals 0. So this is produced automatically in the output with confidence intervals, the non-symmetric confidence intervals for the odds ratios. So we see in the next slide, here's the output from M plus, odds ratio output for effects of the poverty covariate. So now we have a transition table odds ratio so whenever you have an odds ratio as opposed to an odds, we know that we're talking about the relationship between two variables. And here then you find that number 0.440, which is the odds ratio for the effect of poverty on transitioning from class 2 to class 3. And the interpretation is given explicitly here. 0.440. 
the odds of transitioning to the third class at time 4 relative to staying in the second class is 0 0.440 times lower for poverty equals 1 than for poverty equals 0, and significantly so. OR 0 0.440, and here's the confidence interval. So we say that the odds, not the odds ratio, but the odds is lower, 0 0.44 times lower for poverty equals 1 than for poverty equals 0. So this is given in the output under the heading covariate effects on transition probability odds ratios.